Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Trinidad and Tobago's Chief Justice breaks his silence and blames the DPP. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 21st March, 2023. Details when we return. Hubbard's Multi-Department Mount Gay and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. Welcome back. Trinidad and Tobago's Chief Justice Ivor Archie has broken his silence on the public discourse concerning problems at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. On Friday, Archie pointed fingers at DPP Roger Gaspard, senior counsel, for the non-filling of vacancies at his office and a failure to file matters of indictment at the Children's Court. TV6's Alicia Boucher has more in this report. The Social and Legal Services Commission said he felt compelled to address what he labeled misconceptions in the public domain on the criminal justice system. He has revisited the backlash he received following the opening of the 2019-2020 law term, where he took issue with the fact that only 11 indictments had been filed for the year prior. Well, on Friday, Chief Justice Ivor Archie, who is also chairman of the Judicial and Legal Services Commission, said he felt compelled to address what he labeled misconceptions in the public domain on the criminal justice system. He has revisited the backlash he received following the opening of the 2019-2020 law term, where he took issue with the fact that only 11 indictments had been filed for the year prior. Well, on Friday, Archie didn't mince his words, as he raised yet another unsettling matter. He said, quote, I express concern now that in the five years of the Children's Court, not a single indictment has been filed by the DPP in that court. The court was created to use tools to arrest troublesome behavior, and in using restorative justice principles in dealing with children, turn them from becoming adult criminals. The passage of time destroys this hope and the entire purpose of the court." Unquote. The Chief Justice outlined the Administration of Justice Indictable Proceedings Amendment Act, which eliminates the need for preliminary inquiries, therefore being more time effective. Archie said in 2020, the DPP requested assistance with a staffing plan and cabinet note from the Judiciary's Administration in order to allow his office to prepare for the proclamation of the Act. A need for a better communications department, human resource staff, and clerical assistance for attorneys were listed among other requirements. A process for hiring staff on contract was put in place. The Chief Justice said this allows the DPP to hire staff without waiting on the JLSC, and there's nothing standing in his way of contracting legal officers. The Chief Justice further stated that final comments from the DPP, which are needed before returning to Parliament with the amendments to the Act, have not been forthcoming. He cited this as the reason the Act has not been fully proclaimed. Under the Act, DPP attorneys would replace police prosecutors and would be needed for criminal appeals and certain summary court matters. He noted that the judiciary would have to hire five masters, but Archie is shutting down suggestions that over 150 attorneys are required, as that proposal calls for nine lawyers to one judge. He said, quote, I cannot say that I am at all convinced, and so I must express concern at the insistence by the DPP on this level of staffing before agreeing to move forward to accept any change that may give relief to the criminal justice system. I, I must also admit that I am at a loss to see the need for a ratio of more than three prosecutors to a judge for most cases, with a small cohort in the district court for summary matters, at the Court of Appeal, and 10 for initial hearings. I have expressed the view that it is a matter of management, of assignment systems, and of scheduling. Unquote. 
As it pertains to other issues of staffing, Aji said, when there is a vacancy at the DPP's office, it is the DPP who is required to make recommendations for the filling of the post through the Director of Personal Administration, who is the source of contact for the JLSC. Archie cited several instances in which DPP Roger Gaspard failed to submit recommendations to fill vacancies from 2019 all the way up to 2023. In 2018, Gaspard highlighted a space constraint curtailing the hiring of new staff, and in 2020, a new building on Park Street was handed over to the DPP, which still remains unoccupied. The Chief Justice called it unfortunate that he was forced to respond given the impartial nature of the JLSC, under the Constitution. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. A political analyst in Trinidad and Tobago is calling on Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley to follow in the footsteps of the founder of the United National Congress, Bas Pandey and assume the additional role of Minister of National Security to address crime. Nicole M. Romani of TV6 News reports. Referring to former Prime Minister Bas Pandey, Dr. Shane Mohammed issued the challenge during an interview on the Morning Edition program earlier. I dare the Prime Minister to take up the baton as Bas Pandey did and take up the role as Minister of, of, of National, National Security. Security. Mr. Pandey was elected Prime Minister in the 1995 general election. During his tenure, the crime rate spiraled out of control, causing concern to citizens. As such, Mr. Pandey, the then Prime Minister, decided to take the reins and head the National Security Ministry. TV6 contacted Mr. Pandey, and he said, quote, During my time as both Prime Minister and National Security Minister at the same time, crime was reduced to its lowest in 20 years. The murder rate in 1998 in Trinidad and Tobago was 91, the lowest. I left office soon after in 2001. Yes, I would say it was a great success, end quote. Dr. Mohammed also weighed in on the police commissioner, Ola Christopher's call for divine intervention in the war on crime. She told a recent business conference that everyone had a role to play, adding that unless we insist on God's help, we will be working in vain. Today, Dr. Mohammed says, far more is required at this time. What, however, is of our concern is that um, we can't go around, Ola Christopher can't afford to go around, walking around, making grand statements, and then alluding to bringing it all down to God is a trinity. And yes, while we, ex while we have had blessing and I and, and because we are geographically strategically located uh, however you want to put it and we've been blessed to not be give, not have serious catastrophic uh, natural disasters hit our country we have been plagued by crime for over 25 years he says there must be a strategic and definitive plan for arresting the crime problem where's your operational plan where is your intel intelligence gathering apparatus? Where is your CC footage technology and CC footage uh, ga information gathering apparatus? Where is the technological advancement that... What about the technological advancement that exists in police headquarters? Nicole M. Romani. TV6 News. In another item out of Port of Spain, popular Calypsonian Western Rollins, the Crow Crow, has been banned by High Court judge from using certain lyrics in his controversial song entitled Another Sat is Outside Again. Justice Frank C. Passad granted an injunction to businessman and social activist Inshan Ishmael, who brought the case against Crow Crow to prevent the entertainer from making further defamatory remarks against him. Rollins was due to perform at shows in North and South last weekend. Justice Frank C. Passard noted that Crocro's song reference name Inshan, which was juxtaposed against the assertion that this individual sells stolen car parts in the bamboo. The judge pointed out that there is information which suggests that a Calypsonian on the 14th of February in an interview admitted to camouflaging the claimant's name in his song. 
He declared that a person's reputation is not a tradable commodity and must be jealously guarded. The judge acknowledged that, quote, Calypso is an integral part of the cultural landscape in this republic. The art form has fashioned the way we live, think, and socialize, and the commentary it offers can catalyze awareness and change. Creative license, however, cannot be used as a sword to engage in ill-informed or baseless attacks which can decimate an individual's character or integrity, unquote. He stated that the court will not condone or accept any position which advances a narrative that social media comments or commentary by Calypsonians is sacrosanct and that people should be free to say whatever they feel as they speak their minds, even if the content is divisive, derogatory, deceitful, dishonest, or defamatory. Justice Ipasad ruled that Croco shall be restrained from performing his Calypso, another sad mirage is outside again, unless the imputed offending portions of the song are deleted. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. St. Lucians are being assured that the expansion of police powers to help law enforcers control the island's worsening crime problem, particularly the escalation of gang warfare in Viewfort, will not result in the rights of citizens being abused. Jason Darius of the DBS News World has this report. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre announced earlier this week that Thursday's house sitting would center around emergency legislation to give the police, quote, emergency powers to suppress the rampant spate of crime currently being experienced on the island, particularly in the south, where seven people died as a result of gangland-style gun violence in the space of three days. However, mere hours before Thursday's debate, the public was still unaware as to what form those emergency powers would take. Former police officer, now member of parliament for Miko North, Jeremiah Norbert, though remaining tight-lipped on the government's plans for these powers, they sympathize with St. Lucians and assure that the government holds the safety and security of every St. Lucian citizen in high regard and maintain that the results of Thursday's house sitting will show just that. St. Lucia is a small, a very small island and you have persons can move from one end to the next end of St. Lucia within an hour, an hour and a half. So, some persons are of the view that, I mean, even if you were to strengthen the presence in Viewfort, you may see a, a situation where people may diverge or, or, or disperse into other areas. Uh, and harsh reality is you cannot have a police officer working in every nook and cranny of this country. But I think just because of what has happened, especially in the weekend and within a short space of time, I think what has happened there is very important. A lot more has to happen and a lot more is going to happen. And that is one of the reasons that we are going to the parliament this afternoon to ensure that the police get what they require in order for them to be able to operate fully, effectively, efficiently. Norbert also cautioned the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to exercise these new powers with due care and discretion. We also have to call on the police as well because um, as a government, we also come under a lot of pressure when we have to do to Parliament to, to um, give the police more powers. Giving the police more powers does not necessarily mean that they have to go and abuse the, 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 the authority that, or the powers that we vest in them. And I trust, I mean, the court of men and women I worked with during my tenure as a policeman, I trust that they will utilize the powers um, in a law-abiding manner. They will not um, take advantage of the powers, and we will see some fruit being, we will see some fruit being bare from, from the, the laws that we are going to pass this afternoon in the House. There has also been public concern about whether or not these new powers bestowed on the police force would trample St. Lucian's human rights. Nobody, however, asserts that the rights of all individuals have to be taken into consideration when dealing with the current crime wave. In a little while, a little later today, you will know what these powers are. I don't want to speak prematurely on what is about to happen today. But um, human rights concerns are legitimate. And you would understand there are times when people believe that their rights are being infringed upon. And there is nothing wrong with anybody having any concerns about human rights being infringed upon. And that is why I said um, it is my hope, um, my earnest hope, that individuals are going to use the powers afforded to them in a way where they still respect the rights of, of human beings. But... We also have to take into consideration the rights of these individuals who have succumbed. We also have to take into consideration the rights of these children who are not able to go to school because of what is happening. The business places, they too have rights. They have a right to earn a living and they've had to resort to closing their establishment very early or not even opening at all. So when we speak about rights, we need to look at rights in full context and not just the rights of, of those individuals who are perpetrators of crime. And as I said, um, I don't want to make any mistake in saying that these individuals do have their rights and I support that their rights are supposed to be upheld. But in the same vein, we need to be honest and say that majority 
when you look at the rights of these individuals we're speaking about, compared to those individuals who are affected, who have nothing to do with the criminal elements out there, I mean, visa, we have to be honest and say, the rights of everybody has to be upheld. Nobot remains confident that the short-term plans being put in place by the SLP administration will undoubtedly have a serious impact on lessening the instances of crime and violent behavior currently being experienced. For the DBS News World, Jason Narius reporting. Hubbard is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. Start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.